This is just a random batch of samples from micro perfumes. These are not season specific, while a lot of them are more appropriate for like springtime weather, which could be relevant right now because we're in springtime. I do have some other fragrances that are for cooler weather also. And I think I'm just gonna do cool weather on one arm, warm weather on the other arm. So let's start with some cool weather stuff. Black opium. I do have a reason for wanting to smell this, even though I think I won't like it. I'm partially interested in it because of all the angel perfume and the new angel elixir perfume. People are complaining that the new angel elixir just smells like black opium and they think that it's like a cheap cop-out because it smells like every other sweet patchouli thing on the market. I always thought that like regular OG angel smelled like black opium. The way people describe black opium and the way that people describe Angel, like the OG original formula Angel perfume, to me sound similar. You know, black opium has those notes of pepper and patchouli and coffee and licorice. Like those are a lot of things that could make it smell like really dirty and medicinal. And like, that's how I felt about Angel when I first smelled it. I could not like Angel. I still really don't like Angel. I like a lot of other Moogler creations, but Angel is just not one I can vibe with. So I got Black Opium partially to just compare with my OG Angel. I have like an OG formula and a travel size. And um, if I ever got my hands on the new Elixir, you know, I would want to compare all of them. So let's start. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this on my hand assuming that it will be like one of the first that gets washed off later in the day when I wash my hands because I'm really worried that I won't like this. Let it mix with the air. I always feel like when I don't have the atomizer, I miss out on the top notes. This is actually pretty mild compared to Angel. It's definitely not spicy, not peppery, not boozy, not medicinal. It just smells, it smells like sweet coffee. It smells like a latte. I really don't smell a lot of the pepper. I don't smell a lot of the licorice and I'm usually very sensitive to those things. This kind of smells like Britney Spears prerogative, the black bottle, that's a predominantly coffee fragrance, except that one is a little more jammy. It has like an apricot fruit in there or something. Uh, it potentially also smells like replica coffee break, but maybe without the lavender, it's not very aromatic. <laughs> it also smells like a less synthetic, less powdery, less plasticky version of Police to be Rose Blossom. That's the skull bottle. It's like an iridescent teal purple skull shaped bottle with a black blossom on top of the head. And that smells like, kind of smells like coffee. Even though there's no coffee in there, it has like a, a similar vibe to me. Like there's, there's like a dry, sweet, woody kind of thing happening here. So I don't really hate it. I thought I would, so that's a cool surprise. It's nice when you like, you know, take a gamble on something, you take a risk and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'd like that. And I actually like it. I don't think I would need a whole bottle, but you know, I, I could definitely use up this sample. It's already starting to fade. It's not lasting particularly long on my skin. And I just moisturized with a non-scented moisturizer. So you would think it would like stick and project a little bit more, but it's not. But maybe, maybe it lasts longer on clothes. Who knows? Okay, Eilish. I got this just because, I don't know, people were saying, oh, it's such a nice, you know, warm, soft, spicy, vanilla, cozy, cocoa kind of fragrance. And granted, people were also saying the opposite, that it's really boring, not worth the price. It smells like every other, you know, warm, cocoa, spicy, sweet, vanilla, woody thing that's out there. But you know, when, when you're getting a sample this small and you're only spending like a couple bucks, what's the harm in trying, right? So I'll put this one on my wrist. 
so that my nose is not accidentally smelling black opium on my hand. This is really um, sugary. This, this opens really sugary and fluffy, almost like cotton candy vibes, you know, um, in the, in the realm of like pink sugar or even Baccarat Rouge or, or even Ariana Grande Cloud, even Burberry Her. I'm not saying they're the same. I'm not saying that like they're identical, but I'm just saying that the opening gives me similar vibes, like very sugary, very sweet, very fluffy and fruity. I feel like there's almost like some berries in here or something. And I know it's still early, but I'm not really smelling any spices. I'm not really smelling any cocoa or cacao. There's really not a lot of chocolate in here. I was under the impression that this would be a little like darker, like dirtier, spicy, you know, spices, chocolate, something like dark, woody, but I'm really not detecting a lot of that. And as I said, I'm usually very sensitive to like spices, spicy notes. But no, it's actually really pleasant. It just kind of smells like a vanilla cookie, um, which is good for me because, you know, I don't like things to be too dark or spicy. But if you were buying this hoping for something dark and spicy, you would be disappointed. Okay, moving on up. Okay, those were my two that were kind of voted as a wintertime fragrance. So now moving on up, I'm gonna go through the three that I think were voted for like autumn weather. Good girl leggere, or at least that's how you would say it in Italian, leggere. I don't know if it's different for Carolina Herrera. Um, I have regular good girl, I do like it. Um, I wanted to try a couple of the flankers. So here we go, get this one a little higher. Right around my little snake tattoo. So I am already getting the OG DNA, the, the regular good girl DNA. I do get hit with some indolic, heady white florals like the jasmine, the orange blossom, the tuberose. It also is opening a little citrusy, which I usually don't like. And in fact, with, with the original good girl, the top notes are like bergamot and coffee. And that sounds like a mistake. Like I don't think coffee and citrus are things that could go together very well, unless unless it's like the tiniest hint of citrus. Cause you know how like breakfast blends of coffee usually have bright notes and there's like the tiniest little bit of citrus in there to like brighten it up. That's okay. But I have to admit in, Good Girl, and even this one, Good Girl Legere, I, I think it is a little too much citrus. However, it doesn't last long. It does not last long. And I would say that this one is a little more like gourmand, like a little more gourmand friendly. Um, maybe like the more approachable version of Good Girl. Like if, if you're trying really hard to like Good Girl, but it's too much for you, too heavy. This one is like a step lighter. Like it's not as dirty, maybe because they took out some like spicy notes or coffee notes or something. I think this one is also sweeter. I think there's more of like a caramelly vibe, like a, like a milkier vibe. I mean, there is still some heaviness. There is still some depth to it. I do think there is still like uh, patchouli and like cedar and sandalwood down here, but it's just like, it's just a notch sweeter and lighter than Good Girl. So I do like it. I do like it. It's a gourmand, but it's not too juvenile. Good for cool weather. Okay, replica autumn vibes. I've been wanting to try this one for a while, since the last, since two autumns ago. <laughs> Uh, when I was raking the leaves uh, and getting like the real crushed leaf smell, you know, r raking up all these maple leaves. We have so many maple trees on our property. We'd be raking up a lot of leaves. And yeah, it's a really like cool, like soft, sweet grass, sweet hay smell. Um, you do get some really nice smells when you're out there in nature and disrupting the foliage with the wet dirt. 
so I, I really wanted to see if like this lived up to its name because a lot of people were like it smells exactly like stepping in leaves in autumn time and i was like i'll be the judge of that it smells woody you know it smells like the wood and bark of trees if anything it smells the tiniest bit burnt it's got like a like a dirty peppery vibe similar to the way that by the fireplace smells not as sweet as by the fireplace though and you know because of that there is a little bit of like a dirt feeling like a dried grass dirt kind of soily petrichor but not wet petrichor like a dry <laughs> petrichor if that makes sense but to me, it's kind of missing that, that sweetness. There is like a natural sweetness that comes from decaying foliage as they start to like, you know, rot and ferment a little bit that I'm not really getting with this. I was anticipating this to be like the tiniest bit sweeter, but I think it's leaning a little masculine and mossy. So it's not quite giving me autumn vibes. It's giving me dirt vibes, which is not a bad thing. I like a good dirt smell. But yeah, I don't know. It's just missing a little something. It's just missing a little, like, sweetness. And then the last one in my fall weather category, dark amber and ginger lily intense, Jo Malone. I think I already left a review for this on Fragrantica, but I don't remember what I wrote. Up here, up top. This actually doesn't smell as gingery or as peppery or even as dark as the name would imply. This is actually just kind of soapy and floral. Like, granted, it could be because I don't have an atomizer. And like I said, I feel like I miss the top notes when I don't have an atomizer to like make it diffuse with the air. And it seems like all the spicy notes would be in the top notes, the, the ginger, the pink pepper, and the cardamom. And I'm not getting it. Maybe like the tiniest, like 2% of peppery, spicy ginger, but, but like, you know, if something is spicy or gingery or peppery, like I usually wrinkle my nose at that and I'm not wrinkling my nose. You know, I wanted something like woody and gingery and soft, spicy, like uh, like Alien Fusion. That's that's one of my favorite Alien Flankers. I, I like all the Alien Flankers actually, um, but you know, I really wanted something like kind of spicy. It's dark amber and ginger lily. So I guess you know they're kind of having the lily do all the heavy lifting to keep it floral. Eh, it's okay. It's it's cozy. Like I feel like this would be really nice on like a rainy day and you want a little cozy pick me up, but it's um just not what I thought it would be. Okay, up here going into summertime. I think this is the only summertime I have that I got recently of this micro sample batch. Another Joe Malone fig and a lotus flower. So I do like fig. I like fig in Womanity. I like the fig note in Nest Indigo. It does give me a really um, juicy, wet, savory, like wet wood vibe, like green wood. So I think fig is like a really fun, beautiful note. And lotus flower, I'm actually not particularly familiar with lotus flower. I'm sure I've got a couple of like perfumes that have lotus flower notes and I'm just not aware of it. So we're gonna see how fig and lotus flower come together. Cause I think those are the only two notes. Ooh, so it's citrusy actually. It smells like a gin gimlet. <laughs> the, like, it's not supposed to be citrusy, but it's reading citrusy for me. Sorry, that that's what it smells like. It smells like a gin gimlet. It smells limey. And there's not supposed to be lime in here. Does lotus flower smell like lime? 
odor profile, an aquatic floral note, light and airy. This isn't light and airy. This is like citrusy, sour, puckery, tart, syrupy. Okay, so it's not bad. I mean, I do love me a gin gimlet and I do love lime. I love sour, but definitely not what I was expecting. Maybe it'll dry down woodier. Okay, now we're entering springtime fragrances. Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid. I am generally a fan of Victor and Rolf. I do like Flower Bomb. I do like Flower Bomb Nectar. I do like some of their other creations. And I don't know, like I thought I would really like Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid. I thought I would like a fruity version or like a pink version of uh, Flower Bomb or like something with a green fruity note. I don't know, it just seemed intriguing to me. So here we are. You can tell it's Flower Bomb. You can tell it is a relative of Flower Bomb, but it's like all the things that make OG Flower Bomb what it is, all the things that make Flower Bomb kind of polarizing, like the tea, and the rose and the patchouli, you know, people always complain, oh, this is a patchouli bomb. You know, all of those things that make flower bomb flower bomb have been removed, but the vanilla and the sweetness is still there. So it still smells like flower bomb. It smells like flower bomb, but juvenile, like young. Um, and I don't really smell too much peach, unless they were going for a white peach. In my opinion, white peaches are a lot sweeter than like the yellow peaches. Vines, I don't know, that's kind of nebulous. I guess there's like a tiny hint of a dewy green note in there. And yeah, just orchid and vanilla. It's just a very sweet vanilla-y floral like a gourmand floral, like a sugared edible flower. And it's so weird because you can tell it's a flower bomb, but it, it's it's none of the things that make flower bomb flower bomb. It's interesting. I do like it. Would I get a big bottle? Probably not because I get all this same sweetness plus a kick of weirdness from Flower Bomb Nectar. So I don't feel like I need both. Although Flower Bomb Nectar is a little bit heavier. Uh, OG Flower Bomb is also a little bit heavier. Those are more appropriate for like cool weather. This does feel like it could transfer over to springtime weather. You know, this feels like it could hold up in, in warm weather a little bit better. Um, but you know, this is also like not the type of thing I want to be smelling like in the springtime. Ariana Grande, God is a woman. Jerome Epinette, my favorite perfumer. I thought, well, if Jerome Epinette did it, then it should be good, right? And Ariana Grande perfumes are always like a hit or miss for me. I have Cloud, which is pretty good. I have Sweet Like Candy, which is pretty good. I have Moonlight, which is pretty good. <laughs> I have Rem, which I really like. But they just, I don't know, like I get them expecting them to smell like one thing and then they smell like something completely different and then I'm disappointed. But then I keep going back to it. Yeah, this this smells like, like a juicy pear jelly bean and it's really soft, it's really fluffy. I think because there's that like musk mallow and like a orris root or something, like it's it's pretty fluffy, it's like, pillowy and um and it's a little bit rosy but it's very soft and you know granted i just have a tiny wand so i really can't get a lot of perfume on my skin but this is it's really like inoffensive it's really um you know it's definitely sweet and floral but like it's pretty neutral like i feel like you could wear this anywhere. I don't see how anybody could dislike it. It's sweet, but it's not headache inducing. Yeah, so that's fun. Okay, supposedly also springtime-ish. Very good girl glam. So this is like cherry. This is like cherry, bitter almond, 
rose, white, floral, like lily or something, and vanilla. Oof. Honestly, right out of the gate, it's a little pissy, and it's a little, it's just perfume. It smells alcoholic. It smells like, it smells like a very rosy, white, floral, pissy perfume. Unless that's like the sour cherry and bitter almond being too sour and too bitter. But this is like a little bit cat pee. Like rancid cherry, rancid almond, which is so weird because the first time I tried this, I thought it was nice. Maybe it's because I got too much sweetness stuck in my nose from God is a woman, and now just in by comparison, this one is really tart. I'll come back to it. I just I just don't know what to make of this right now. All right, Elisab Le Parfum. I'm noticing that I'm really starting to like Elisab. They do everything like just to my tastes, especially citrus. I usually don't like citrus, but they do citrus really well. They do rose really well. Like I have Le Parfum Royal and I have Le Parfum in white. I really like in white and supposedly that's like an orange blossom bomb. I love it. I think it's great. So um, I was like, wow, I love all these Le Parfum flankers. Let me try the OG Le Parfum and see how I feel about it. How can I go wrong? Elie Saab does everything really, really well. This projects. This projects. Even with this tiny little bit on the applicator wand, it's stronger than that uh, very good girl glam that was just punching my nose. Very jasmine. Like, I was in a Wegmans a few months ago, and for some reason they had, like, jasmine flowers in their little, like, floral section. They had, like, a little scraggly, like, jasmine shrub um, that you could buy and take home, and, and I was able to put my nose in a real jasmine flower. And I would say this is the most, like, realistic, photorealistic jasmine I've smelled. And it's balanced, supposedly it's balanced with orange blossom and honey, um, but it's not very sweet, at least in comparison to Le Parfum in white. The white is super sweet. I almost feel like I'm eating like a vanilla biscuit with a hint of orange zest. This is not as sweet, but it is really good. It is really nice. I do like this. I like it a lot. Keep trying to go back to that very good girl glam. All right, the cat pee smell did go away a little bit. It's smelling more fruity and rosy now, but wow, that, that, that little pee pee opening, that was weird. <laughs> and last one, last springtime one is Gucci Bloom Nettare di Fiori, flower nectar. I got this because years ago I had Bloom Aqua di Fiori and I liked it, but it was, I didn't think it was special. You know, I was trying to go for really like dewy, zingy, realistic green. It was, it was shortly after I experienced Moo Moo Le Bleu. And I, I really wanted like a very particular, like green, wet, dewy feeling. And, uh, Aqua di Fiori felt a little too manicured to me. It felt like I was sitting in a rich person's manicured flower garden rather than being out in the middle of like a green valley surrounded by trees. I wasn't getting that with Aqua di Fiori, so I gave it away. I gave it to somebody as a gift after sampling it like twice. But then for some reason, my brain kept thinking about it. I was like, wow, I do kind of miss that Aqua di Fiori. I kind of wish I held on to it. I wonder if I could get another bottle. And then in my research, I discovered that there is also a Netare di Fiori, which is flower nectar rather than flower water. So I was wondering if this would be a little bit more complex, a little deeper, a little more sophisticated, a little uh, like sweeter. You know, the word nectar implies that you'd get a little like sweetness in there. So I looked at the notes and I was like, oh, it looks cool. Maybe I'll try it out. So here we are, we're trying it out. 
It is sweet, but not in like a sugary gourmand way, just like in a really sweet flower way. Like they took the sweetest flowers they could find. Honeysuckle's really sweet. It's, it's not in a lot of perfumes, and I feel like that's because, at least in the United States, honeysuckle is invasive. We try to not have honeysuckle here, but it's pretty much everywhere. There are giant, like, honeysuckle bushes taking over, you know, a lot of the area around here. And it's a really, really nice smelling flower. I wish it weren't such a pest. And there's supposedly a little hint of ginger in here. I don't know what Rangoon Creeper is, but that was something that I saw in the notes and I was like, what? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, it's really nice, really pleasant. It's, it is a really good springtime floral perfume, but it is not the same as all the other springtime floral perfumes. You know, there is, there is some stuff in here that like sets it apart. So I think this is a really nice, unique, springtime floral perfume. It's unique without being challenging. Um, it's still very approachable. It's still very pleasant. It's not too weird. Yeah, this is this is really lovely. I do really like this one actually. Natare di Fiori is, is like sparkly a little bit. It's it's a uplifting, effervescent. Uh, so that's it. I just I just haven't done a perfume video in a while and I wanted to make one because I enjoy smelling all the things So I just had like a little cluster of samples that I got from micro perfume. No particular reason season occasion I just wanted to uh, talk about them. So thanks so much for watching. I'll smell you later